at Labour Party conference, Keir Starmer's Labour is continuing its tradition of clamping down on Palestinian free speech. How? Well, they've censored the use of the word apartheid. The decision was made in reference to an event put on by the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, which was set to be called Justice for Palestinians and Apartheid. Writing for Labour list, PSC director Ben Jamal explained what happened. We were informed that the party had decided to remove any reference to the word apartheid from the title of PSC's listing for its fringe meeting and event in the conference printed and online brochures. When PSC challenged this decision and sought a rationale, we received an email from a senior figure who informed us that the Labour Party will not publish a description of Israel as an apartheid state. When we challenged this decision, the further reply was that the Labour Party would not publish content that, quote, we believe to be detrimental to the party. Now, Israel has been judged to be an apartheid state by Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the Israeli human rights group Bet Salem. So the use of the term really shouldn't be controversial. Benjamin also said this. A Labour government should be fully committed to the upholding of international law and the principle that respect for human rights should be central to all relations with foreign states, including trade relations. Such a commitment would mean holding Israel to account for its practice of what amounts to a crime against humanity. Now, about the description of Israel as an apartheid state, a Labour spokesperson said this. Keir Starmer has been clear that this is not the position of the Labour Party. Now, what's a bit strange here, right? So this is, you know, they haven't actually banned anyone from saying apartheid at conference. They just refused um, to, to put the word apartheid in the title of Palestine Solidarity Campaign's event, right? But what I find a bit disingenuous here is that you know, it's not the case that any fringe event at the Labour Party has to be Labour Party policy. Right, you've, you've, you've got talks on all sorts of things at, at Labour Fringe. If it's put in the, the title of an event, that doesn't mean it's Labour Party policy. So this is not just about, oh, it's not the position of the Labour Party. Fine, the position of the Labour Party isn't that Israel is apartheid. It should be. Right? The position of the Labour Party should probably be um, in line with Human Rights Watch, Amnesty and Bet Salem. It should be. But it's not. Fine. It doesn't make sense to me to say, well, it's not the position of the Labour Party, so we had to take it out of the title of their fringe event. No, this, this is more than that. This is them saying it's, it's offensive, it's detrimental, it's, it, it's a real problem for you to say Israel is apartheid. Not just, okay, that's not our position, it's fine for you to have that position. No, it's saying this is beyond the pale. It's beyond the pale to use words to describe Israel, which are used by Amnesty, which are used by Bet Salem, which are used by Human Rights Watch, right? And which are true, right? If they say, oh, it was always, oh, this row was always about genuine anti-Semitism. If you're, if you're censoring people from saying Israel was apartheid, clearly there was also something else going on. Um, in other somewhat related Labour news, it's been revealed that a party lawsuit against former staffers has now cost £1.4 million. The lawsuit concerns the circumstances of the 2020 Labour leaks document. The party accuses Five staffers as being implicated in the leak. All five deny any involvement. And the dispute could drag on for a very long time. That's because the party has requested the trial be postponed until 2025 to avoid it clashing with a general election campaign. Anya Proops KC, acting for the party, said this in a written argument. It would be unfair and inappropriate to contrive matters in this litigation so that, in effect, Labour was having to contend with preparing for running a trial at the same time as it was running a general election campaign. A lawyer representing the former staff members has said this about the suggestion. The former staff members have a justifiable and well-grounded concern that Labour's wish to postpone the claim until after the election is, in fact, heavily influenced by a desire to avoid, during an election period, litigation which will bring the Labour Party into the public eye in ways it might find embarrassing or uncomfortable, but which it has chosen to bring. Right, so that's the important thing. It seems that Labour are trying to avoid this trial coinciding with the general election because they don't want the public to sort of talk about what they're doing, but they are doing it, right? It, it, it's totally within the Labour Party's power to drop this um, claim this litigation, which is costing everyone shed loads of money. But no, they want to go forward with it, but they also don't want to be held accountable by the public for it, which to me seems a little bit disingenuous. Three independent investigations have already been completed into the leaks. One was by the Information Commissioner's Office and two were commissioned by the Labour Party itself. Neither were able to establish the source of the leak. Yet Labour civil action goes on. It continues. It drags on. 
Georgie Robertson is one of the five former staffers involved. She said this, or being, you know, who are being accused of having leaked the document. Um, Georgie Robertson said this, having the false allegations that the party makes in this claim hanging over me is taking a significant toll. My priority now is to see these proceedings through to their conclusion so that my reputation can be restored and I can move on with my life. Now, to me, this seems very vindictive, right? You've got former staffers. They're not incredibly wealthy people. You're not like going up against like huge corporations. You're going up against former staffers. Um, and, you know, it, it's very stressful being taken to court for something like this because it could end up that you have to pay everyone's costs. Labour are racking up 1.4 million. Apparently, there's going to be another 800,000 um, of cost to the Labour Party before this ends. And this is all for something which free investigations have, have found no conclusive result for. Now, I should also say, I have absolutely no idea how the Labour leaks document came to, you know, public attention. But whoever leaked it, I'm bloody glad you did, right? Because there was there was a lot in that document which was of massive public interest. I think, as we said at the time, you know, if the, ideally, if this had all been done in a more, um, you know, organised, long term way, some of the names would have been crossed out. But that's not how these things work, right? Because you're in a rush. Da, 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 da. As I say, I have no idea how the process worked. Um, not my role in this organization or any organization. But this to me seems like a very vindictive case, especially as whenever there has been a, a case between the Labour Party and right-wingers, the Labour Party has just dropped it. Even when, you know, their lawyers have said you could win this one, they've said, oh, no, we don't, we'll, we'll leave the right-wingers be. You know, we won't, we'll apologize to them actually. Um, but when it's the left-wingers, um, they, they drag on a campaign for five years while, you know, dangling a Damocles sword over their head saying you might be in line to to pay millions of pounds. I think vindictive is the right word, Michael. I think this says a lot about how Starmer views the left. I think there is a real aggression in the way in which he's trying to pursue someone the left. And I think, you know, whenever Starmer's been bold and been a bit, you know, like really dug his heels in, it's usually been not to to to, to the Conservatives. It's usually been about the left of the Labour Party, you know, the left in general, the left more broadly. So I think this is a lot about, you know, how Starmer views the left and the fact that he's willing to pursue this kind of vindictive, you know, court case. It's going to cost millions of pounds. And, you know, the people whose reputations are on the line here, I feel really sorry for those people. You know, again, I don't know how the document came to life, but, you know, these people, like you said, they're not these high profile figures in the Labour Party. You know, so it does feel like, a battle not worth fighting for, for Labour, but look, if you're Keir Starmer, it's a battle he wants to fight because I think Keir Starmer has a genuine, visceral dislike of the left. Well, it seems like lots of people around him have a genuine dislike of the left and he's very happy to go along with it. So either he has a hatred of the left or he's very spineless. I mean, we kind of know he's somewhat spineless. Um, but yeah, and what's, what's going on there? In any case, it seems vindictive. And as I say, it's very, very different how they treat people on the left of the party and how they treat on the right of the party, both sort of in public, both within the party and even in the courtroom, right? It doesn't seem like due process and a sort of concern for the rule of law is what's motivating Keir Starmer here, the forensic former director of public prosecutions. As you might be aware, we are currently running a um, fundraising campaign. We're trying to get Navara Media fit in, 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 in fighting form before we go into an election in 2024. Obviously, we're not running in the election, but we want to be able to cover it um, very effectively. We know that there are lots of issues that you guys care about um, that mainstream media outlets are not going to be focusing on. We want to make sure we are there to make sure those issues are a big deal when the election comes around. And to do that, we've judged we need 5,000 extra supporters. Um, if you would like to be one of them, um, please do consider going to navaramedia.com forward slash support. We ask for the equivalent of one hour's wage a month or whatever you can afford. Um, everything is absolutely appreciated. If you are already a regular supporter, thank you so much. Um, you are what makes all of this possible.